One of the most prevalent natural disasters in Nigeria is flooding. This environmental hazard has continued to claim the lives and property of many Nigerians. The yearly release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon has been identified as one of the contributing factors to flooding in the country. The Cameroonian government had, in August, reaching to the National Emergency Management Agency of the country on the country's plans to open the Lagda Dam floodgate, advising NEMA to take proactive steps to mitigate damages. A fresh alert has now been announced as eight states are under threat of food output as the release of water from the Lagda Dam may erode products from farmlands. These states include Kogi, Kwara, Kebi, Niger, Nasarawa, Benue, Adamawa, and Jos. But joining us in the studio is a food security expert, African farmer Mogaji. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, let's even begin with what we saw if last year, what we witnessed. We, we saw uh, loss of farmlands. Uh, so many were washed away. And um, the question is, are we really learning lessons every year with regards to this matter of flooding to actually put in place measures that will address the matter of uh, food security or insecurity, as the case may be, knowing that we have this matter of flooding every year. Um, we're not planning, and we're not implementing ex uh, plans that were in existence. So what do I mean by that? Um, each time there's a flood, you always find uh, a committee put together to assess and recommend. And so we've been having this well over 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as simple as not allowing farmers farm around the floodplain areas where when they release water, they will be affected. As simple as that is, helping them to go upland to areas where the floods will not get to, that has not happened you know, over the years, irrespective of how devastating the floods have been. So um, we've not been planning, we've been writing documents, and we've not been implementing those documents. And this is not just a federal thing, it's mostly a state affair. Mm. It's the states that are affected directly, and you don't find these things in place. But there would be committees set up. And it's unfortunate that year in, year out, when you have these challenges, uh, the farmers pay for it, but the farmers just have a little to pay for it. It's Nigerians, generally. The percentage of people that buy more expensive food is more than the population in the states even affected by the flood. A crucial conversation that we mostly don't have is the disease that comes along with the flooding of the waters. Mm. The soil diseases, the, um, the eggs of a lot of all these uh, pests and things, that come into the country, that a year to year, check, a year to years after, there's always an incident of an outbreak of one thing or the other. We don't pay attention to all this, but all this is always highlighted in the documents. So the farmers lose, the uh, citizens of the country pay expensive. Again, now the farmers will now have to face challenges of pests and diseases again. At the end of the day, it's still the citizens that pay for it. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, the, the, this, the lake where the dam is situated, you know, they said is a sort of um, source of potable water, irrigation of cotton, maize, millet, sorghum, animal fodder, grazing fields, and fishing, which is, you know, to their own benefit. But, you know, looking at it, you know, from the perspective, perspective of the uh, challenges it's going to bring to Nigeria, uh, at least um, an estimated 700 billion naira in economic value was lost the damages caused by 2022 floods in the Nigeria's agricultural related sector. Is there a way we can channel these to our own benefit? Well, unfortunately, there is none because the water washes everything away. And that was why the original um, uh, idea when they were building that dam was for Nigeria to Having build dam. smaller dams. Mm. It, one particular big one to take double of that water and to have other smaller dams that they would use those dams to engage in irrigation and fishing. Mm. So because we have not done that, there's nothing we can do. The water will keep washing everything away. 
uh, and so there's nothing we can do. What we can do is actually small when it comes to uh, taking advantage. So the waters will stay on this land for a longer time. And I've seen this happen in Gombe. So what would happen is when the water stop flowing and the water is supposed to now drain into the soil, farmers now plant. So when they plant, they don't need any form of irrigation again. The water, because the, the land has been oversaturated, the soil is oversaturated with water, they now plant in it. And so by the time the crop, the, that crop is being harvested, it doesn't need any form of irrigation. But the farmers, you know, pay through their nose to do that. And they are also not leveraging all the available lands of, uh, you know, that they can farm on. So what should be happening is we know we don't have the dams. There's nothing we can do. But can we leverage? Can we work with the farmers such that we have equipped them? They are also waiting for the waters to recede. And as it's receding, they go into their cultivation. Mostly, they do mostly vegetables, mm -hmm. you know. So, but we're not even doing that. So it's a total loss that Nigeria embarks on every time there's flooding. And don't forget, this is just Lagadam, yeah, Lago Dam, yeah, yeah, Lado Dam. Yes. The other Oops. predicted rain that is likely to still flood through the Keregod Dam to Onyo, you know, down south, that's still there. So we may say, oh, we we're not having heavy rainfalls. It's not heavy rainfalls that is a challenge. It's that you would have a two weeks rainfall fall in two hours. Mm. And so right now we are having a, a refreshing day saying, oh, the rains are not falling. But if we have that intense rainfall, they have to quickly open the dams. So that already had been predicted. So if that happens and you now have everything coming, it's still coming from the north, ending down. So you now have a Benue and Kogi having more flood waters. Now it's going to affect an aspect of um, Kogi, Benue, not all of them. But if you now have this other part coming also from the northern part, then we have challenges. Don't forget, all these dams lead to each other. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Ikeregot Dam in Oyo State, in saying is what floods Ogun. Mm. And the, uh, the Sherry and Co. It is the Senyi Dam, Ikeregot Dam, that floods. And so that also takes water, you know. And so what normally happens is if they open the dam, because I've operated, you know, farms across that value chain, especially in, in, the, in the dry season, when they open a Keregod dam, which is also in a saying, before it gets to the irrigation plots where we use, owned by government, some, takes a minimum of 8 to 14 days when they've opened the water. Mm. So after, same in the same is saying local government takes 8 to 14 days. So when do we see the rainfall? We won't see that flood happen just like that. It's going to take some days. And unfortunately, the way it's looking like is at the harvest time mm. across the country. So That's what that exactly means is that, yes, the effort of farmers, investors is about to be flooded away. My goodness. Yeah. And is that a way they can talk to, uh, uh, to you know, do this uh, area is concerned that they can hold on for harvesting to be done. So when they have done harvesting, then they can open the dam. Is it possible? It's not because the pressure, if you, if you go on this water, if you've been to like a Geregorj dam, if you see this dam, the pressure, the, when you are hearing the sound of this water, if they don't release it and it busts, just like what happened in Ukraine, it's going to be worse. Cameroon itself would have a big challenge and so they also, for their national security and food security, have to release the water. Mm. So there are those who have also talked about perhaps dredging. Yeah. Might be another way for us to go as a country. Is that something we should do? Yes, because when you dredge it, you are able to take more water. Mm. But that doesn't happen in one year. That doesn't happen in six months. So we either, and most times, the dredging really happens in the dry season, when the water is low. So, if we are going to dredge, it has to be from like December, end of November, December, January, February, March, you know, moving forward. So, that is not, the new administration just came in. Mm -hmm. So, it's, they're just going to review. So, it's not looking like a 2023 conversation. 
But this can be done within the next four years. But as at now, we really need to um, leverage the river basins, the irrigation projects, encourage private sector to go into irrigation, push out more incentives so that people can plant a bit of upland. If not, food is expensive, but very soon it will really go up because the rice is gone. Because all these states are major rice producing states. Right. Many of them are major staples, yes. yams and cassava. Benue and Kogi does a lot of that. Yes. Nasarawa. So when you check, and, and in fact, Edu, Edu does a chunk of the fruits, plantain, pineapples. Mm -hmm. Edo feeds Lagos with pineapples and, and plantain. plantain and banana. Mm. And even poppers. Those four critically come from Edo. So beyond, you know, as we're looking at it, we're looking at the flow of the waters. Yeah. When it crosses the road like it did uh, 2022 in Kogi, Kogi yeah. meaning food coming from the north. Could not get into Kogi. Could not get into Kogi, so it wouldn't be able to get down south. My goodness. So it's, it's, it's a cocktail of challenges that is brooding. Uh, and unfortunately, the documents that is being presented, even uh, with relevant uh, ministries in, in charge uh, or saddle the responsibility of our food security, is still not taking care of these flaws. The, at least the, a document was released last week, and they didn't take care. He mentioned it. But the practicality was not in that document. Mm. So bottom line is that, you know, what we were you expecting to see? Yeah. So we were, you know, when you read, being uh, an expert in the field, yes. We okay. A lot of conversation around. Oh, uh, we will start from November. It's not the all this. Now let me say this: all the lands they use for dry season farming, that's the land that the waters will flood. Mm. So even all the documents, you should be talking about upland production in the dry season. As against the lands already marked, you know, designed for dry season. Those lands will be full of water now. So perhaps you need to expatiate on this upland. Uh, so upland, so upland. Those who are watching may understand what you're talking about. Okay. So let's, let me use Ogun State now. Mm. Uh, when you want to come into Lagos. You see, um, Isheri, Bega, they are all low lands. Mm. Ideally, where you find all those buildings, that is where they call it um, setback. That's where, when it floods, the water is supposed to take all those places. So in the north, where we have most of our agricultural uh, operations going on, they are all low lands. So the water fills the place like a fish pond. The elevated lands around that area, that is what you call upland. The water, water doesn't go up, it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. So those areas are where we should be channeling irrigation too. Mm. And mo as at now, it's not government that will do it. It's private sector, individuals who want to invest in agriculture. That is what the Ministry of Agriculture needs to embark on, on the media, saying do upland, do drip irrigation, you know, as against where we are. So the document presented, if we have floods coming from, like, that takes over Jigawa, Kano, once Jigawa and Kano is taking over with flood, then our food security is going to be heavily challenged, which will affect Kaduna and Co. also. But this land that we are planning to go and farm in the dry season, according to some parastatals of government or government agencies, those lands are the lands that this dam will flood now. Hmm. So as we sit, once they release that water, they can't farm those lands again. I'm thinking of extreme okay. measures, you know, to... Um, enhance the coping skills for the farmers because it's really very sad when someone who has, you know, toy, you, know, the effort. you understand all of those things, you know, before you till the ground and all of that. Is there a way they can erect um, a structure that would serve as a buffer for the, you know, the torrent of the water coming? Or, you know, it's, I don't know whether it's possible <laughs> that you can assume you can remove all of those you know, planted crops and, you know, you, you replant them. Spirit. Exactly. You know, to another... <laughs> well, I, I, I don't doubt technology mm. if they would still, they can bring that in. But if you have witnessed this flood, what has happened? I've witnessed it in uh -huh. Jigawa many times. Mm. The torrent is crazy. It's crazy. No, it, it's just, it moves gradually. gradually. I moved, yeah. I've witnessed it in Ogun too. 
you just this week is like a hundred meters and then about five days it comes so they build embankments with sacks give it 10 days you will not see the sacks again it would have been submerged you will see roofs moving on water nobody can stop it mm. except they create those channels the only thing to do is create the channels except that's all <laughs> because I, I've been around various countries also. I, I think I, I witnessed one recently. I'm not sure whether the one close to us here, maybe Agility or something, yeah, there's a they, dam they close have, to us here. It yes, actually it's from the water. Ogu. That's, that water is from Ogu. Okay, so yes, they so the water. Floods then, you know, I saw some of the, the water. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, all of this, I, 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 I don't know, you know, <laughs> just the... Looking for the quick measures. Quick measures. Because <laughs> no we can't hanging watch it to address. Concerned. We, yeah. can't, we can't watch people, you know, read... Perhaps we need to the, understand the, the implication to know that we need to address this head on as quickly as possible. See, because the water comes and goes, we don't have... It's not real. It's abstract. The moment it goes, we forget about it. Well, Nema, it has wreaked the havoc already as it comes. So in the last 12 years plus, it always reaps this havoc. And Nema, you just provide facility. Those facilities is not solution. Nema, water resources all need to have conversation I especially the presidency and the president must be interested. Mm. Until the presidency takes it to sit down and say, this, we need to find a permanent solution, it will not get done. The agencies may want to do it because it has to go into budget. That's right. It's huge amounts of money. It has to go into budget. So once it's not in the budget, those huge amounts of money, they can't do anything about it. You'll just be providing mattresses and co which does not solve it. So we need to begin to first farm upland. We, again, we need to you know, decentralize our food sources strictly right. from the north. Mm -hmm. We need other, I've, I've said it for years, we need to develop other areas, and it's not federal, it's the states. Each state governor needs to develop to know that if there's no food in the north, we need to take food back to them. Mm. The North has always been faithful in giving food to, the, to Nigeria as a state. Mm. When the North faces any crisis now, maybe locusts, maybe flood, maybe something, the other states of the country, they were still sleeping. So until you develop the potential per state, we will not be food secure because you will now find Foreigners, I mean countries that border Nigeria, coming to mop up. Mm -hmm. After the flood, Niger and all these countries around us all buy their food from Nigeria. Yes. So after the flood, they will just bring more money to buy. Mm -hmm. And so every year after the flood, there's always higher crisis. crisis in Nigeria because they will bring more money because they are more desperate. And we actually don't plan to increase our reserves. Yeah. So because we did not plan our production to increase our reserves, our reserves mostly are empty and we don't even have enough. We're not increasing the capacity. So they just come, mop up in trailers and go. And don't forget, when we talk about it, they now put the blame on middlemen. Mm. Middlemen are business owners. They take loans from bank at double digits. And must pay back. And must pay back. So instead of them warehousing and protecting Nigeria's interests, they will rather just make the money and move on. So we blacklist the middlemen instead of government to go fund them, give them facility, let them have more money and so that they can dictate to them, we are giving you single digits so you cannot sell. Mm. But we are not funding them, we are only pointing accusing fingers at them. Mm. So the middlemen are the ones that government needs to go and fund now. Mm. Fund them in a sustainable way, not go and dictate to them. Mm. Right. 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 Perhaps maybe because the, the, the twin dam in Adamawa State, which is meant to contain the overflows, you know, they call it Dasin, Hausa, and the other one. There must have been reports. There must have been maybe some monies allocated for, some funds allocated for, you know, the 
digging, uh, dredging of this dam or building of these dams, maybe heads should grow. Maybe from there, they should do a lot of um, uh, research into it, inquiries into it, why that hasn't been done. So if, if heads roll, do you feel that will solve the problem? No, he no head will roll. See, the, the current administration is already faced with a lot of challenges. What was predicted is not what they meant. Mm. I can tell you this, especially in the agricultural sector. Mm. What we've been hearing over the last eight years, rice is available, this is available. The they got into the office and discovered that nothing is there to, in, in terms of what is reported and recorded. Mm. So rolling of heads will distract them from even doing anything. What needs to be done, and I've said it a couple of times, is the river basins. When you say, oh, each river, one river basin has 27,000 acres uh, that can be used for dry season farming. They cannot use the 27,000 acres because some, they need to deseal some of the canals. Mm. Some of the pipes are not working. They should just go and find out how many hectares or acres can we use out of these 27 acres? If it is 10,000, they plan for the 10,000. I have said this and I'm saying it again. Except you are an insider. The head of department now of, let's say, engineering was not in that office 20 years ago when they constructed some of these facilities. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I witnessed one of these facilities. I won't mention. Instead of using a 12-inch pipe to take in water, they reduced it to eight inch pipe. Yes. And so that was done 20 years ago. I lost about eight million Naira because we've planted just to release water and the water was not coming out. It was one of the artisans that I was taking care of the children's school fees That's that told, told me that Oga, it cannot work oh, because if they, don't, if they dig down, it's eight instead of 12. Some people sold it. And so the head of the department now, Will he now be the one to say that, oh, 15 years ago, my bosses did this. His retirement is immediate. Wow. So mm. what government needs to do is to help the people in office to say, give us the accurate condition where, out, where these things are, and let's work with it. Mm -hmm. Trying to open things up, every civil servant will be careful. Mm. So we need to help the civil servants heading departments so that we work with what is available and know that, oh, in the next four years, we will, re we will make sure everything is working. But no civil servants will give out information for its predecessors. It won't, doesn't happen like that. Matter. Wow. <laughs> so they, they may need to sit down with some of us to say, oh, God, this river basin, this is it. So we can plan. It's not basically it's the planning. And states have a responsibility to, so, to handle. A majority we, of this responsibility. Right. We have to leave this conversation here now. We must thank you, African Farmer Mogaji, food security expert, for your time on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you me. so much. Well, this is where we'll draw the curtains on the program for today. Let's tell you that the views and reactions of all our resource persons are theirs and have no connection with TBC News. Mm -hmm.